Well, it's good to see you, Absolutely. Superintendent of Pinellas County Schools. <laughs> I'm Tiffany Ford. I'm the Director of Community uh, Advancement at the St. Petersburg Arts Alliance, which mm -hmm. means part of my job is supporting arts for a complete education. We thought it would be really awesome for our first ACE Insider newsletter to, to <laughs> talk to you. Sure. Um, so I am a Pinellas County Schools graduate, graduated from Largo High School, uh, but I was a student who uh, was before the referendum. So what the referendum has done for the arts in the last 20 years has been remarkable. Uh, but unfortunately, I didn't benefit from that and I'm probably a good example of why we needed it. Um, so my experience as a student was not full of the arts. Um, came from a modest family. You know, we didn't have a lot of disposal, you know, discretionary income to go visit, uh, you know, a lot of arts types things. And so I didn't have a lot of exposure really in my K-12 experience much at all. Um, I, I think I took a theater class uh, in order to graduate, but I really loved that class. I took it as a senior uh, at Largo and it um, opened up a little bit of the arts to me individually and, and uh, was in a, uh, a show, uh, Little Abner, I think was the show, um, and uh, just really you know, started to show the possibilities um, of that. Um, went on to become uh, in college, take advantage of just you know, some arts opportunities in terms of uh, just as a consumer, um, and then became a teacher and then a, a high school principal uh, at Northeast High School for nine years. And then uh, obviously now superintendent for about six months in the five years before that, overseeing academics, which includes uh, all of the arts programs. Um, separate from that, I'm a father of a seventh grader in our schools, and he uh, takes both a band and visual arts class uh, and is doing really well in both of those. And so um, we've passed on that, that sort of love of the arts to our son and, um, and he's exercising that every single day. Um, so in terms of, um, you know, the superintendent's role, I think you touched on a little bit, certainly advocacy is a big part, connecting with groups like Arts for Complete Education, but connecting with individuals, uh, connecting with uh, museums, arts groups and organizations. And um, in some ways our district is very connected. Uh, when I say district, I mean Pinellas County, in organized, but then in other ways, you know, there's always lots of one-offs and free spirits and things like that. So um, in this first six months, I've tried to get to as many of those events as possible. I was trying just in my mind um, to say, okay, which ones have I been to in the last month? And I think um, a fashion show, which we had a partnership with the Dali, uh, which was held at Gibbs, Gibbs High School right before the break, uh, an art show at the Marian, uh, Marian Arts Center uh, attended that. Um, and a teacher art exhibit that was down at, um, Warehouse oh, Arts. yeah, yeah, uh, went to that. And then I know this week, uh, I'll be at, uh, the 620, uh, Studio 620 for the, um, our journal, Journeys in Journalism program and, and, uh, the Midtown Through Our Eyes, uh, series. Fun fact, my first high school play was also Little Abner. <laughs> Is that right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so tell us about your passion for education and, and just what, what led you here? Um, you know, my entire um, life, my parents said, you're going to go to college. My parents didn't attend college. Um, great parents, but they, you know, the only thing they said is you're going to go to college. They didn't know what or why or how, but that's what they, they you know, reinforced since I was young. Um, and as I got into high school and, and started to think about, you know, what do you want to do with your life and how does it make a difference? Part of the advice I received was uh, from my father who said, you know, make sure you enjoy what you do every day. You're going to work the rest of your life for at least 50 years. You better enjoy it. Right. Um, and so, you know, you start thinking about well, what about this opportunity? What about that opportunity? And I was a, a really good high school student, um, graduated as the top male in my class. So, you know, 400 students at Largo High. So I had a lot of possibilities and opportunities, but the thing I kept going back to was um, the role teachers had in my life and, uh, and the impact that they had. And so, um, you know, decided if, if I'm gonna work every day for the rest of my life, wouldn't it be great to be a teacher? And so um, that's what I went to college to do and um, started right away as soon as I graduated and haven't stopped since. And so I think that the thing about education is I'm a, an example, but I've seen so many others um, that it changes people's lives and it gives them opportunities. End of the day, um, you can become whatever you want if you're willing to work hard. 
And, um, and that's what I've tried to instill with, you know, the thousands and thousands of students and teachers I've worked with over the years from a classroom teacher to a principal and now in this role is um, there's just so many opportunities that we can prevent, present to our children and, um, and we have an obligation to do that and, and the arts is one of those. Mm. Yeah, I hear that, absolutely. You know, I, I think, you know, you, you asked, a, uh, I had a little note about a, a favorite artist and it's-, it's Yeah, gonna, I'd love to hear about that. Probably not resonate well in St. Petersburg uh, <laughs> because he's, he's a little more traditional, but Norman Rockwell um, was really the only famous work of art that we had in our house as a, as a child. Mm -hmm. Um, and, you know, I'd sort of look at it and look at it and look at it and then eventually learn more. Um, and that got me into, you know, some of the early museum visits I made were traveling exhibit, exhibits of Rockwell. Uh, but some of the ones in St. Petersburg, I think I got started at school. They used to um, have that Florida International Museum in downtown, um, you know, the communist one. And I think there was a JFK exhibit there. Some of those that I got started on. Mm. Uh, but now it's, it's um, certainly museums. Um, murals, absolutely love the murals that this community has created. And as a principal, I brought a lot of that to my school and tried to elevate public displays of art. So let's have the band play at lunchtime. Let's have the orchestra play at lunchtime. Let's show off murals. Let's have mural clubs um, and any kind of live music uh, to bring those things in. So um, that, that has evolved and, and, you know, both personally and professionally, it's, it's been a, a little bit of a passion to see how many of those, you know, sort of pieces I can bring to our students. Yeah, and I bet it's, it's probably really interesting to see that have an impact, you know, on your family and on, on your son as well. That, that must be really, really interesting. What kind of impact do you see that having on him, if I can ask? <laughs> yeah, I, I think that the, the thing about the arts is it gives individuals, um, students, but adults and, and everybody in between, outlets to express themselves in different ways mm -hmm. that would you know, not be there otherwise. And so um, we see the same thing sometimes with other extracurricular activities like athletics where people can express themselves in different ways, which um, that was most of my background. I you know, mm -hmm. played sports and coached high school sports and things like that. Um, so it, it provides an opportunity for students to express themselves. Um, and I think today it's more important than ever in our, in our digital world and how, you know, most students, good parenting or not, are brought up on technology. And so how do they express themselves outside of the internet is really, really important, or even on the internet artistically. Um, so I think that impact, I've, I've seen it certainly um, in my own family's life, but across our district, students, you know, they're not behavior issues when they're in arts classes. Their performance improves. We've seen the data on how students do in core academics when they're involved in the arts. So we know that to be true. Um, it does take a skilled teacher though too. I mean, it's, it's, it's another really important piece is mm -hmm. it's not just any old artist can just walk in and, and motivate a 15 year old or an 11 year old um, who's struggled that day. It takes someone who has the artistic background but also has the teacher pedagogy in order to do. And um, you know, it's, it's just remarkable. It's, it's our job is to try to make those deep connections with every single student in our district and the arts is one way to do it. Absolutely. And, and you know, your point about um, arts educators being a very special, uh, a special skill, a special mind. Um, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, it's not just one or the other. Um, yeah. So what do you want from us, the community members? I think that, you know, one of the things that we've done really well is partnerships with our arts partners. And so sometimes that's a really like formal in the box type of thing. Like every sixth grader in our district goes to the Museum of Fine Arts and we integrate it into their world history class. And it, it you know, we provide transportation and, and the museum has docent tours and they know what the standards are. And we connect it and that's, that's really clean and good. And so as many of those types of partnerships that we could have that are really clear and you know, clean is it's great. The thing I like about something like the Museum of Fine Arts, um, or even the, you know, we have one with uh, the Florida Orchestra, um, which students go and visit, is that we're not cherry picking students. Everybody gets to go. I love when we're able to do things where it touches every single student. Um, we have mobile art exhibits as well. The Dali has one, um, and every single student in, over the year gets to do that. So mm -hmm. I think it, those are great. 
But then there's the more specialized ones like this fashion show one or where a teaching artist will come into a school and do a set of series of, of just with a, that particular school, which is just as powerful. Um, and so everybody in the community, in the arts community, has a different niche that they can provide. Sometimes that's coming in and being a teaching partner. Sometimes that's inviting us into the space. Sometimes it's just coming in for a, a demonstration, which is a one-time thing. Um, other times it may be educating our teachers, you know, going and participating in professional development days with our teachers or having them come in for an extern externship for a day, uh, whether it be on one of our official training days or in the summer or whenever it's most appropriate. So it's, it's about bringing people together in ways that matter for the students and the instructors and the community so that all three legs of that stool feel like this is benefiting us. Um, so as many of those ways we can do it, um, we're open to and, and uh, you know, I know Arts for Complete Education represents our entire, you know, district and, um, you know, I, I certainly with the St. Pete Arts Alliance, you think quickly to St. Pete and how many things there are there and, and that's okay. true, uh, but there's just as many, you know, opportunities in Dunedin and um, in Tarpon Springs and in Palm Harbor, so we need to make sure we're, when we think of those things, we're thinking across our, our entire district. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what, what makes it accessible and inclusive for students is, is giving, um, giving them the opportunity to visit many kinds of organizations in many corners mm -hmm. of our, of our community um, and make, make those connections because to your point, um, something different resonates with each person. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. Yeah. Was well, there anything else you'd like to add or, or share? With, um, with it, I, the, the community today? Yeah, I think the other piece that we've made a real concerted effort, and I did in my previous role as over academics, was um, arts integrated curriculum. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're familiar, right, where, where it's not enrichment and it's not standalone, but you're doing an English language arts exercise at the same time you're doing standards in the arts. Um, so we've really tried to push that, particularly in our elementary school curriculum. So you're not just talking about um, you know, uh, uh, an issue in Florida history, but you're using art to, you know, dive deeper into why did the, uh, the settlers leave this area and go here, or what in the picture, you know, caused you to do that, or even music, uh, sometimes when you're talking about, uh, civil war, things like that. So we, we've really tried to make that a great effort, and it's, um, it's not as shiny as, look, everybody's inside the museum, uh, but it's sometimes more impactful because it's, it's daily. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you for joining, right. joining us, right, Superintendent of Pinellas County Schools.